What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, the Bad Diggity Dizzle, back with another New York Giants video. We're going to start talking about the draft. Yes, the draft is here. Of course, the NFL playoffs are still going on, but of course, we're not part of that for the fourth straight season. Hopefully, 2021 will be a little bit different. Before we get into it, I just want to say thank you all for watching. I really do appreciate it. Hit that thumbs up. If you would be so kind, and if you're new to this channel, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Make sure you click the bell notification so you know when I go live or do a video like this. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. The links are in the description. I will follow you back. Really trying to grow the IG more than anything. So if you guys are only going to follow me on one, please follow me on Instagram. And like I said, I'll follow you back. And I really do appreciate it. So Kyle Pitts. This is the funny thing about Kyle Pitts. I'm going to talk about Kyle Pitts today because a lot of the season, there's been a lot of guys... Giants fans saying we should look at Kyle Pitts. They should get Kyle Pitts. And I kept saying, there's no way I want a tight end in the first round. No, no tight end. We don't need a tight end. We don't need a tight end. We don't need a tight end. It didn't work with Evan Ingram. It ain't going to work. We don't need Kyle Pitts. But I keep talking myself into Kyle Pitts. And this is why. In my opinion, the New York Giants picking number 11 are going to miss out on the three best receivers in the league. Now, or in the draft, rather. Now, I'm still going to do videos on Devontae Smith. I'm still going to do videos on Jalen Waddell, Jamar Chase. I, well, maybe not Jamar Chase, but the two Alabama receivers I'll definitely do videos on. We'll talk about Devontae Smith. We'll talk about Jalen Waddell because those are a possibility. I don't know if Devontae Smith will be there, but probably not, but we'll talk about that in, in future videos. I really think that Dave Gettleman's going to go out and get a wide receiver. If the New York Giants go out and get a Kenny Galladay or an Al Robinson, both of those are tall receivers, they're both free agents, uh, the New York Giants will have filled that spot. And this is a thing. A lot of people are saying the Giants don't have any offense weapons. But what this would do is give the Giants a legitimate number one wide receiver. Allen Robinson, Kenny Galladay, both six foot four, both 27 years old in the prime of their career. That would immediately make D Darius Slayton a wide receiver too, which would make his game a lot better. There's no doubt about that Darius Slayton would excel as a wide receiver too. And then, of course, you put, like I said, a Robinson or a Galladay out there, wide receiver one. And then all of a sudden, your wide receiver three, your slot receiver, Sterling Shepard, becomes a beast. We all saw Sterling Shepard have a great season when he was healthy. Sterling Shepard's one of the best route runners in the NFL. He's got great hands. And not to mention, one of the most underrated facets of Sterling Shepard's game is his blocking downfield. Everybody keeps saying the Giants don't have any wide receivers and they can't get any separation. Sterling Shepard gets separation all the time. But he'd be even more effective if he didn't have to be a wide receiver too. The New York Giants go out and sign a wide receiver. That opens it up for Kyle Pitts. Listen, we're trying to get as many weapons around Daniel Jones as possible. You want to know for sure after 2021 whether Daniel Jones is your future franchise quarterback or if you're going to move on from him. And the best way to do that is to surround him with the best offensive pieces you can find. Kyle Pitts is also a very good blocker. This also makes Evan Ingram expendable. I know all New York Giants fans love Evan Ingram. He's our Pro Bowl tight end, Evan Ingram. Uh, and I joke because he is a Pro Bowl, but let's be real. Evan Ingram cost us how many games? His drops are ridiculous. How many of those drops ended up being interceptions? The fumbles? He probably single-handedly cost us three games. We all know that he cost us the game in Philadelphia when he couldn't catch the pass. And had he caught that pass, the Giants win the division, and they're in the playoffs. I know a lot of people want to get rid of Evan Ingram, and of course, if they do go out and draft Kyle Pitts, that makes him expendable. What is Evan Ingram worth? I have no idea. The Giants may be better suited just to hold on to Evan Ingram for a fifth year and then let him go and get the compensatory third-round pick for Evan Ingram. However, if you kept Evan Ingram, the Giants' offense would be ridiculous. Joe Judge comes from the New England Patriots, so they used to run those two tight end sets with Gronkowski and Aaron Hernandez. And they were extremely effective. You could have the same type of thing here with Kyle Pitts and Evan Ingram. Now, Pitts is compared a lot to Waller in Los Angeles. and Waller, I'm sorry, Las Vegas. Waller is one of the most underrated players in the NFL. A lot of people don't even know about Waller, how great he is. Uh, should have made second team all pro as a tight end out there. Second to Kelsey, obviously. But Waller is one of the best tight ends in the league. A lot of people don't know about him. Kyle Pitts is in that mold. If you put Kyle Pitts and Evan Ingram in two tight end sets, all of a sudden you've got offense all over the place. You've got home run hitters all over the place. Evan Ingram's biggest problem is not his talent. It's not his athleticism. It's in between his ears. This becomes a mental block, guys. It's Steve Blast disease. 
It's happened to a lot of people. Steve Blass couldn't throw the ball to home plate. Chuck Knobloch all of a sudden couldn't throw the ball to first base. I don't remember if it was Papelbon. There was there was one closer that couldn't throw the ball to first base. Della Matances couldn't throw the ball to first base as a pitcher. Sometimes it just gets so enlarged in your head that you can't get out of there. And I feel like Evan Ingram loses concentration. I really feel like it's in his head. Athletically, physically, he's gifted. He's open. He's a weapon. He just has to get it together between his ears and concentrate. It's just like guys that fumble all the time. It gets in their head. Tiki Barber got in his head. Tom Coughlin fixed that. Once the fumbling issue was fixed, Tiki Barber was one of the best running backs in the league. I think that you could do that with Evan Ingram. Just get him to concentrate. Just find a way to get that guy to look the ball into his hands. But if you lined up Allen Robinson, Sterling Shepard, Darius Slayton on this side, Evan Ingram, Kyle Pitts, and Saquon Barkley, how good could that New York Giants offense be? I have talked myself into wanting to draft Kyle Pitts at number 11 because I really believe that the tight end is a massive part of what the New York Giants have always done here with their passing game. Since the days of Mark Bavaro, when I was watching the Giants as a kid, it was always guys like Mark Bavaro, Martellus Bennett for a while, uh, Jeremy Shockey. There was always these guys that were really effective as tight ends, as offensive weapons. If you had two offensive weapons there to go with Sterling, or I'm sorry, to go with Saquon Barkley, the RPO becomes incredibly effective. The play action becomes incredibly effective. And Kyle Pitts and Evan Ingham together would be an absolute nightmare matchup for any linebackers or safeties trying to cover them. The New York Giants offense would be stupid good with Kyle Pitts and a number one wide receiver. Like I said, I didn't want nothing, anything to do with Kyle Pitts. Once I watched a film on him, I'm sold. The guy had 43 catches for 770 yards and 12 touchdowns. So one out of every four catches, actually less than every four catches, was a touchdown. Kyle Pitts would be a major, major addition to the New York Giants offense. It is definitely a guy that could be picked at number 11. And actually, I just saw a mock draft from somebody. I forgot which affiliate it was. But they actually did project the Giants to take Kyle Pitts at number 11. This is something that I was dead set against for the longest time. But thinking about what the Giants can do, and I know Dave Gettleman is going to go out there and fix this offense. I know he's going to get a wide receiver, whether it's in the draft or in free agency. And I think that the best way to do this, because you don't want to take a tight end to free agency, get your massive, take all your free agent money, okay? A big chunk of that free agent money, get a legitimate number one wide receiver. Get a guy that is proven. You never know what you're going to get out of the draft as far as a wide receiver goes. You don't. All right, Jerry, or I'm sorry, Henry Ruggs is the first wide receiver taken off the board this year, and he sucked. That happens a lot. Get a guy that's proven that could play in this league for Daniel Jones. Get him a taller target. And then again, unlike Evan Engel, who's 6'2", 235, Kyle Pitts is 6'6", 246. He's a big body. He's a big tight end. He's got great hands. He's athletic. He's talented. He can block. He can catch. He'd be perfect for the New York Giants. Again, think about it. Robinson, Shepard, Saquon in the backfield, Engram, and Kyle Pitts, a tight end, Darius Slayton, wide receiver too. Giants do those things in the offseason, just those two things alone before they do anything else. That offense could be scary next year, as long as everybody stays healthy. That's all I got to say for this video, guys. As always, I appreciate you watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section about Kyle Pitts. That's all I got in this video. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, and have a great day. It's a bad diggity dizzle, and I'm out. Peace!